as designers, as architects, as anybody's building is, are we taking care of the health, safety, and well-being of the people who will dwell inside of this building? That's a responsibility. That's a signed responsibility of an architect. That's the responsibility of anybody who's developing a building. And so that's about the people. That's about the people who are going to dwell inside. And are we serving them best? And can we do a little bit better? If we can do a little bit better now, then maybe we can do a little incrementally better next time. And as we, as we get better and better at this, the community of people doing this, they're the, the retailers will start to feel the demand, the manufacturers will start to feel the demand, the laborers will start to feel the demand, and we'll build a bigger and bigger community. This is, is something that will, you know, will grow. At the, we're at the very beginning stages. And so it's important not to get discouraged because there aren't a lot of perfect answers or to realize that there's a lot of intricacies. There's, you know, we've talked a lot about chemistry. We've talked a lot about material ingredients. We've talked a lot about words that we might not even know. There's a whole language here. But really, this is really, in the broader sense, if we take two steps back, it's about understanding the concept of who is this for in the end anyway. It's for the human species. And it's so that we can live better lives. Everybody can live better lives. Everybody deserves to live a healthier life. The best action that anybody can take, really, is to ask questions of everyone involved in building a building. Of what are we making this building out of? And can, is there anything that's a toxic product or potentially toxic product, and can we avoid it? And that's the big question, because if the answer is yes, we can substitute something out, great. If the answer is more complicated, like no, actually there isn't an alternative here, then we can think about how to minimize the use of that, or we can think about how to build something differently. And so the biggest, I think the, the biggest, the most important thing is that people start to ask. People start to understand this concept and ask those questions of everybody they know. What's inside of this? Can we avoid what's wrong? You know, if it's, if it's something that is not good for us, can we avoid it? And by asking questions, it's not only going to affect the project at hand, it's going to start planting the seed in the person that you've asked that question so that they begin to ask that question, so that they begin to feel that pressure that maybe a manufacturer might say, oh wait, maybe I should be looking at this in my product. Maybe there is an alternative. It's kind of um, infectious. <laughs> it's, you want to infect somebody else with that question. What's inside? Is it really necessary? Can it be avoided? And the more people that are asking that question and understand why it's important, the better we'll all be. Just by going and knowing that you can make a choice between two products versus just going to buy the product that you're you've always bought in the past and you're going to buy that because you know it and you know kind of go to an automatic pilot just by understanding these concepts you can start a new habit which is do I really want this one or is there a better alternative that's just a first step and that's a great change in thinking I, it's like an amazing change in thinking it might feel small because I'm going to buy the you know you might be going to buy the brand of milk that you've always bought in the past but now you understand something a little different and you might compare two products. Compare two products of flooring, compare two products of a bathroom fixture, compare two products of a soap that you might buy. And make sure that the ingredients inside of that are ones that you understand and ones that you feel a little bit better about. And if you don't know, you, you now know that there are tools to go and evaluate or to learn more about that ingredient. That's just the first step. And actually, it's just a change in thinking, nothing more than that. So hopefully now you have a, an understanding, a, a kind of a preliminary concept about material health, how materials affect human health and the environment. And in course two, you'll find a little bit more about those materials, what's inside of them, what actually is causing the problem, where are we exposed to those particular materials in our environments, and what, what's the history of that material and why it's causing the problems it's causing. So. We look forward to joining you again, Course 2.